Welcome everybody to Church Beyond the Building 2020. Church Beyond the Building is an experience we have at Westside Family Church every year on the last Sunday of the year to remind us that in fact the church is not the building but rather the church is the people of God wherever they gather in the name of Jesus and 2020 has taught us that principle like never before. Today if you're gathering with your family, maybe some neighbors, your A2 community, that's awesome. If you're by yourself, that's awesome as well. I need you to take out some paper, a pencil, maybe your journal. You're going to be writing some things down also want to encourage you to share this video with your family and friends and neighbors. It's going to be an awesome experience. And now we're going to enter into a time of worship.
amount of love the fact that you can have a God that is perfect that has the same word over and over and over again that's never gonna fail you is amazing We came home that Sunday after he had really pitched the vision of whatever it would have been in August about these A2 groups. And we said, we want to do this. We ended up sending out seven different texts of different friends from all throughout Westside, but hardly anybody knew each other. And within two hours, we had seven yeses. Without them knowing our full story, it's just been their group wrapping their arms and love around us. Because of the commitment and the generosity of Westside, a global team has been able to step into this food security crisis. We've delivered basic food supplies, gas stoves, and vegetable seeds for long-term gardens. We facilitated the provision of gas ovens in 10 villages and provided the ingredients for bread. We decided to make the kits into these very versatile at home or in your neighborhood or at your park or wherever you were comfortable kits that anybody could do anytime. Made down to the size that they were for kids gig, we could unbrand them and then share them with local churches and our community impact partners. One partner was Avenue of Life and we were able to take them 50 kits that would serve um, kids all over Kansas City area and they could stay at home and be safe and learn about God's word and have fun with their families and that was a huge blessing to us and just an amazing testament to how big our God is. One of the most significant things that happened is that we were challenged to pack 200,000 meals in one weekend. The food packing event was the most attended event, and I think we had like over 70 students serving at Speedway. Every time a box was filled, it would ring the bell and the students would cheer. It was just, it was just so cool. God's hand of favor has been upon this church for a very, very long time. And it's not because we're smart. It's not because we're better. It's because there are signs of gratitude and generosity. And God has placed his hand in favor on us because he can trust us as ordinary people to let Jesus ride into the city and his will be done. 
So thank you for the privilege of serving you with your gratitude and your generosity. I have entitled our last message of this year, Goodbye 2020, Hello 2021. Can I get an amen? 2020, what a year it has been. Ever since I can remember, I believed 2020 would be a year when things come into focus. You know, 2020 vision. It has been everything but that. Instead of things coming into focus, everything went into complete chaos. But if we, before the calendar turns the page to 2021, take time to look back and reflect, I think some very positive things will come into focus for us. God invites the wise person to not get stuck in the past, but to reflect on and learn from it. First, we need to ponder what is positive. Finally, brothers and sisters, the Bible says, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things and the God of peace will be with you. There have been some really positive things about 2020. For Westside, we have so much to be thankful for, which you just saw. The people of Westside stepped it up in so many ways. We doubled and tripled our compassion to hurting people. We are ending the year strong financially. We reduced our debt by another $500,000. We didn't back down on one single initiative. You know what, that's insane. No, that's God. We need to examine what we've experienced. Only be careful and watch yourself, the Bible says, closely so that you do not forget the things your eyes have seen or let them fade from your heart as long as you live. Teach them to your children and their children after them. Our eyes have seen a lot of things in 2020. We need to learn from them as we turn towards 2021. Westside has relearned some very important things in 2020. Number one, the church is not the building. Number two, the focus is not on passive attendance, but on active engagement in kingdom work. And number three, we need to rise above political parties and serve King Jesus first. Next, we need to punt on the past. The Bible says, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. You may have made some huge, big mistakes with all the pressure of 2020. Somebody might have done or said something to you in 2020 that hurt you. You need to name it, deal with it, and then punt it into the past and leave it there. So here's what I want you to do. Take time to do these three things. If you are with your family or some friends, maybe your A2 community, your small group, have a good, healthy discussion. And if you're by yourself, take out a paper or your journal and write it down and then share it with somebody before the day is out. And when you're done, push play and we'll say hello to 2021. Hello, 2021. Let's take a look again at what Paul said in Philippians chapter three, verse 13. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. He not only put the past in the rear view mirror, he pressed hard for what lay ahead. The picture is of a runner who is straining his head forward to win the race by a nose. And we need to do the same. Here's what I want you to remember as you prepare for 2021. Be aware of the enemy's desire to bring you down. Ephesians chapter six, verses 10 and 11 offers us this challenge. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. In the next verse, Paul reminds us that our enemy is not really flesh and blood, but the spiritual forces in really dark places. This enemy wants to take you down. He has been in this business from the very beginning of time. Let me take you back to the garden where the first two people came on the scene. 
Adam and Eve are in the garden, just like I am in a garden today. <laughs> it's not the Garden of Eden, but it's the best I can do in Kansas City in the month of December. Adam and Eve are naked and they don't feel any shame. They are taking walks with God in the cool of the day. Satan, masquerading in the form of a serpent, seeks to destroy them. This is exactly what the enemy is trying to do today with Christians. He is trying to bring you down, destroy your relationships, and he uses the same five strategies he did with Adam and Eve in the garden. I got these insights from a guy named John Gordon who wrote a cool book on it called The Garden. First, it starts with doubt. The enemy plants a seed of doubt that God can't be trusted. And that happened in the garden when the serpent said, did God really say to you that you couldn't eat from all the trees in the garden? The enemy gets us to doubt God, his existence, his goodness, his plan. He gets us to doubt ourselves, doubt that we're not good enough, that we don't have what it takes, doubt that his, this adversity is bigger than us, that we're not going to overcome. We have doubts right now that we're not going to get back to normal. We have doubts about the future, that it's hopeless. And so we're filled with doubt. He tempts us to believe his lies versus trusting in God. God provides abundance. They could eat of any tree they wanted but one, and the enemy causes us to focus on what we lack versus what we have. How often do we do that? When we bite, he's got us but it doesn't stop there. Number two is distortion. The enemy is always distorting the truth. How did he do this with Adam and Eve? He lied to them in the garden by saying, when you eat from it, you will be like God. He's lying to them because they were already like God. Back in chapter one, when God made Adam and Eve, he said, then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. The enemy is still playing tricks on us today. The Bible tells us over and over again, like in 1 John chapter 3 and verse 1, see what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called the children of God. And that is what we are. This is who we are. So we need to face each day knowing that we are children of God. Our identity is sealed by our position in Christ, not by our performance. And yet the enemy gets into our head and twists or distorts the truth. God said that you were his child, but after all the mistakes you made, do you really think he's going to stick with you? If God so loves you that much, why did that person reject you? If God loves you so much, why didn't you get that promotion? If God loves you so much, why are you not further along in life? The enemy distorts the truth to undermine your relationship and trust in God or others close to you and to undermine your confidence in yourself, which leads to strategy number three, discouragement. We rehearse the doubts and distortion over and over again in our minds, and it leads to discouragement. The enemy knows that he can't beat us himself, so what does he do? He gets us to beat ourselves. It is when we are discouraged that we often make some of our greatest mistakes. Adam and Eve believed the lie that God was holding something back from them and they got discouraged with the perfect life God laid out for them. They are now in the most vulnerable spot and this leads to distraction. You're discouraged now, you have a sense of doubt, the lies are coming in and then what happens? The fruit becomes appealing and that's when we make bad decisions. We think the grass is greener on the other side. Adam and Eve decide to take the bait and they bite. Game over, the enemy wins. We make a decision that is really against what God has for us. It is about self-reliance instead of relying and trusting on God. And so we make a decision that's not in our best interest or the best interest of others in our life. Maybe we go after the bright, shiny object thinking this will make everything better. We want wealth, we want a nice car, we wanna pay more to look good. Whatever it may be, these are distractions. We wanna be with somebody that really loves us and cares about us, and you're not feeling it from your mate, 
that person in the office, office appears to be that person. We want to be accepted, so we start hanging out with the group that is involved in things that aren't good. And here's the deal. A distraction is anything that keeps you from being all that you were meant to be, from being what God has planned for you. That's a distraction. When we take the bite, it leads to the fifth D, which is division. As soon as Adam and Eve take the bite, they immediately know that they have made a mistake. The consequences of their actions show up immediately. Something has changed in their nature, which is what God, the truth teller, told them would happen. They have introduced death into their lives, not only for them, but for their offspring, like you and me. We don't die because of God. We die because of Adam and Eve. Romans chapter 5 verse 12 tells us, Sin entered the world through one man and death through sin. And in this way, death came to all people. God wants to give us eternal life. But Adam and Eve didn't believe God. But not only that, their eyes are open and for the first time they recognize that they are both naked and immediately cover themselves up. Why? Because now, in addition to the good thoughts they have, they now have evil thoughts towards each other. They feel vulnerable and they cover themselves up to protect themselves. Later in the day, when God questions Adam and Eve on what they have done, you will notice that they introduce us to the age-old practice of the blame game. Adam throws Eve under the bus. He says, the woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. We now have division, mission accomplished. Not only is there division in Adam and Eve's relationship, but their division is now in their relationship with God. And as a consequence, they are escorted from the beautiful garden. They believed the lie, they listened to the enemy, they got discouraged, they were distracted, and then they were divided as a couple and separated from God. Now they live with anxiety. Did you know that the Greek word for anxiety means divided? Isn't that interesting? Now here's what I want you to do to keep the enemy from taking you down in 2021. I want you to talk about how you have seen these five Ds at work in your life in 2020. Identify which of the five Ds do you struggle with the most. Then push play and I have one more thing to talk with you about. Second Corinthians chapter 13 verse five invites us to examine yourself to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourself. Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you unless of course you fail the test? Paul, the writer of this book, invites each of us to examine ourselves to see if we are in the faith. If you have given your life to Jesus, then Christ is in you. And if Christ is in you, then you are a somebody, a child of God. And don't let the enemy convince you otherwise. Your identity is anchored in your position, not in your performance. In Christ, you are already good enough. You are already accepted by God. Live in the truth of who you are and don't let the enemy get in your head and bring you down. Don't give him any ground. Now, if in examining yourself on where you're at with God, you acknowledge that you are not in the faith, you have not given your life to Christ, you have not asked him to forgive you of your sins, then Christ is not in you and you are not a child of God. You are in the most vulnerable position of all. You are in fact separated from God and the enemy is set up to wreak havoc on your life. Your identity is completely dependent upon your performance. And when you die, and you will, you will be eternally separated from God. But it doesn't have to be that way. Christ as the Son of God came down and took on flesh and became one of us. He died on a cross, a death he didn't deserve to pay for Adam's mistake and your sin. Romans 10, nine through 10 says, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. 
believe in your heart that Jesus is who he claimed to be and then profess with your mouth out loud this belief and you will be saved and you will instantly be adopted into the family of God and become a child of God. Now, if you would like to do that today, I'm gonna to put a prayer up on the screen that you can pray out loud. If you decide to take this step, I know the people that you are with will celebrate with you, but we would also like to know. At the bottom of the prayer is an email address. Reach out to us and let us know that you said this prayer and trusted Christ for the very first time. We would like to send you a gift and to help you with your next steps as a Christian. Heavenly Father, I thank you for our time together today. We are ready to say goodbye to 2020, but not without first reflecting on what you have desired to teach us so that we may bring that wisdom into 2021. And we enter into 2021 with great expectation, not because we know what it offers to us, but rather because we know that you, the constant and loving God, are entering into this season with us. And it's because of our trust in you that we are excited about the days ahead and what you have as you allow us to participate in the building of your kingdom. I pray for all of those, Father, who are about ready to say this prayer, to accept Christ into their life for the very first time. How exciting it is to celebrate with them this entrance into the family of God. And now, Father, I also pray for all of us as we finish 2020 and enter into 2021, that we will be aware that the enemy is trying to take us down, but that in Christ we have the power to overcome. And Father, it is with that I finish this prayer by thanking you for your great love for us. In Jesus' name, amen.
Yeah.